pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Motion. 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 Motion.
house, maybe in six months. Phone call, yes.
school audit report, everything came out good, no, uh, no deficiencies, and we need for the board to pass the motion to accept the report as, uh, as submitted. Okay, uh, we have a motion by Mr. Ronald to accept the uh, 2022 financial audit report. Uh, Second by Monty. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. That's all I have. PPRA, uh, Daniel? Uh, yeah, just pretty typical. Um, I know CPR has reviewed some design packages, no various reasons that have been submitted. Uh, a couple of uh, agreement amendments are being prepared for uh, Section F, and you know what? That's about it. So Frisco Industrial Contracts is the contractor. Uh, he's complete with all the structural metal work. Um, they we were waiting on Entergy to get power to the building. Uh, they did a bunch of electrical work, but we need power to, to do the remaining parts of that. Um, as of last week, we still didn't have power from Entergy. That's like three weeks that we requested it. I'll get a phone call. Uh, It's been, on the other projects that we have, I mean, it's been several weeks and maybe even a month, even though uh, we requested it through the parish. And, um, it's just, they backed up. So there's no pay application on this project for this month also. 
Um, I just want to have the repairs to the warehouse, so Randolph Shipyard is the contract on that one. They replaced, they fixed one door and the other door uh, that they want that we needed to have replaced to complete the job was came in last week, and I'm being told that it's going to be installed this week. So hopefully that'll be complete by the end of the week. And uh, D North Levy uh, received bids in November. Our limits contract was a low bidder. Uh, we had a pre-construction meeting last week. Um, we're going to issue them a notice to proceed on Wednesday. Um, they're going to start digging with a marsh buggy excavator on the on the furthest reach, <coughs> of the and then we relay the levy on re relay the material onto the levy uh, with, a, with a land based excavator. Um, we expect that to, to be a couple of months worth of work. Um, they got a good plan, so. I'm sorry, who's the uh, backpack? Outer Limits, it's uh, uh, yeah. Mario LaFar and Matt McLaren. Yeah. <coughs> We've done a bunch of projects with them. They, they're pretty good. They have a good client on us. Good. And we want to pay application on that. Well. The record, I don't have any pay out there. Some more often. You don't want to do it. Yeah. 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 Move on. Yeah. This is an opener. We don't have any pay apps either. Okay. Wow. Starting to bring it in. That's because Laura's not here. Laura says she bets one million dollars. That's right. Uh, the E's Bayou Water Retention Project. <laughs> We're still working on that permit, uh, as well as coordinating with the pipeline companies and the property owners to get servitude agreements. We're hoping to be in that ties by the end of March or so for that project for the next year. <coughs> South flood wall improvements, that project is complete. We're keeping it open in case there are any additional Hurricane Ida um, work that needs to be done. The D North ramp project, this is the ramp of, at Loop. Uh, we have a contract, the LA contract with Enterprise uh, LLC. We had a pre-construction conference last week. So everything's going to be going pretty, uh, starting with, after the first of the year. Loop has a little bit of stuff to get out of the way, so right now we're projecting construction starting February 13th, but we'll keep you all up to date on that. And finally, we had the reconnection of Brent Canal to Bayou Lafourche. We took bids on that last week. Uh, the low bid was turned in by Lowland Construction in the amount of $988,527,000. The other two bids were 1.2 and 1.3 million. We think that's a good bid. Of course, it's a little bit more than Wendell has ready, readily available to spend. So we're still talking with him about possible ways to get that price down a little bit. So we will be able, uh, we'll give you all a recommendation of award at next month's meeting. Yeah, we have the open out block right here. And that's been sitting there the whole time. It's a solid. Oh, uh, we're going to have to clear the canal from this point all the way past South Coast High School and past uh, the city. The canal is pretty plugged up. And uh, again, the, uh, with, with this siphon here added our other siphon, we'll start being able to just do four tenths of a foot in 24 hours instead of just two tenths, which really is going to give us control of the body a lot more than uh, the days of having to keep the gates closed or two and three days or even four, uh, it, it really, really reduce it a lot. And then if we can ever do the AE's job, uh, the, the, the uh, water containment, uh, then we can have maybe half a foot in 24 hours. So uh, it's, it's, we're really gonna reduce the problems that we have had to cause by closing the plate, uh, the volume between the water and the water and the water. You said 900,000? Nine hundred eighty-eight thousand. Eighty-eight thousand. Right. Our estimate was seven hundred and thirty. Yeah. Three. It's always really kind of like that. What's an estimated completion? What's frustrating? We did the original. June. The original assignment was a little bit more than uh, I think it was around two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. But we designed it ourselves and we did it ourselves. That just the Grammyo did the the the, the, the side report. We had to go and take a look at the. Uh, so I've been down on the river, the river, and the same river. Uh, it's it worked out well for us. It's worked 
frustrating, but uh, it's impossible. South Levy reshaping and compaction. When that contract is ran on shipyard, they're continuing with construction to raise that levy up to a plus 18 from pump station number two all the way to Apache Corn. Um, there's no payout this month, but we have some that projects going to be complete in the next one to two months. On the C North levy improvements, this is um, Compo and Sons doing continuing to do work to raise that levy up to plus 16. We're recommending approval of their invoice number 1093 in the amount of $22,365, and this project should be complete this month. Okay, just so we're looking south, okay, so this is the, the, the four falls walk that the uh, Morganza lived right here, and you can see how now that area is going to all completely open up all the way to that, uh, that levee. So with that levee in place and the other northern levee, uh, we saw some real tremendous reduction from this side <coughs> to the other side. But we got to see you know, the, the water drops in like six feet from one side to the other, which is a big deal. Uh, that's why we're not looking to have them build a lot much more past the bridge. And even in 13, we feel pretty confident that we'll be in good shape. Okay, um, you've heard the recommendation of our engineer, okay, Compo and Sons, invoice number. One zero nine three, the amount of twenty two thousand three hundred sixty five dollars. Moved by Mitch, seconded by Brian. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Pass. Okay, this next slide that Amy has is the C North Crown work. Uh, it's not on the report, but this is just some some work that the levy district just got started on. There's some uh, some extra material on the side of the inside tool of the levee that we're going to be excavating out um, and utilizing that just to sweeten up the crown of the levee. Right now, the crown is at about a plus 12. We're trying to get it up to about a plus 14. Um, like Wendell said, we think long term that'll settle down a little bit, and plus 13 is going to be a great situation for that levee. But this is north of the Paul Buffer Bridge, going all the way to Highway 24. So that work is just getting started uh, with in-house with the levee district. On the sea south flood side repairs, this is from uh, just a little bit north of the base on pump station all the way to the south side of Apache. Uh, there's a, a lot of debris and, um, and, and flood side work that was done since Hurricane Ida. And what we have right now is two contractors, Grand Isle Shipyard and Compo and Sons doing some clearing work on the outside. Um, this is the, the first phase of a project where the second phase, like Wendell had mentioned earlier in the meeting, um, there's the possibility of a bottle pit uh, on Paul Buffer property. We think we can utilize to, to get some uh, additional material to be able to enhance that flood side toe of the levee. We're still working through some of the, the details of that phase two work, uh, but the phase one work, getting everything cleared out and ready for that, that flood side improvement is complete. Um, we do have a pay act today, number 1094, in the amount of $26,250 to Compo and Sons and we're rec recommending uh, approval of that pay app. We don't have any pay apps yet from GIS on that, but that should be coming next month. And again, just to remind everybody, it's a picture really short, but this would look like this if it wasn't for this. <laughs> is, that, is that dramatic? Yeah. Is that dramatic, right? Mm -hmm. And again, that, that's why we want to picture with the final word. Yeah. I, I tell you, I just uh, came with a close Wells connection and they, they cleared out all that property. Right. And I'll let this sticks out like oh, yeah, it's I, impressive. Yeah, it's so it was, yeah. It's uh it's sad that we have to keep on getting as hard as we have to, but uh, it's it, it, <coughs> it's uh survival not do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you heard the recommendation of the engineer, okay, Compo and Son, the invoice ten ninety four the amount of twenty six thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Okay, which is uh, Mac, uh, motion by Mac, second by Roman Curo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Which is passed. Okay, on the D South ramp, this is um, just uh, past the Crawfish Farm wall. There's a ramp that goes over the levee that the, uh, the district wanted to repair and do some improvements to. Uh, we had Compo and Sons do that, and we're recommending their invoice number 1095 in the amount of $2,100. Okay. Uh, 
pay. The conversion recommendation was in there to pay co-pods on uh, an invoice 1095 among 2100. Moved by Bonnie, second by Mitch. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hold. Carry. All right, Yankee Canal and Section A East erosion repairs. This is on the, the inside tool of the Yankee Canal levee uh, facing the south. Uh, that contractor, Grand Isle Shipyard, started work on the project to add riprap to the tool of that levee. Um, right now, work is, is at a standstill with uh, some of the lingering issues of getting limestone in the area due to the low river conditions. We do think that's starting to improve, so we should see some work uh, starting back up in January. And we think that project's going to be completed in early spring, probably two or three months. On the Rose Flood Wall Vessel Impact Barrier, um, this uh, project is actually complete in the, the permit phase now. We do have the Corps of Engineers and DNR permit. Um, I did look, look into the 408 permit issue that Wendell, you and I talked about. Um, they specifically state in the, the permit, in the Corps permit, that we do not need a 408 permit. That's crazy. So we don't this need a 408 crazy. permit. This is the first project that is on the water specifically 408 and you don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're ready to, to submit our final um, final request to the state uh, for the funding of this project. Uh, but we we'll think we'll be ready to go off for the fire tossing in January. What's yesterday on uh, our, our last estimate on the project, I think, was $1.4 million. Um, and I think a lot of that was funded by CQRA, so, or not all of it. <laughs> and the last project is uh, Section F, <laughs> Farm Improvements. Um, we met with CPRA uh, the end of last month to finalize some of the project objectives. <coughs> uh, we're uh, assisting to shift some of the money that was originally allocated to Section F onto the E North project, the Coldwood Farm project that Joe is working on. Um, so we're still going to have a pretty pretty good improvement project here, but trying to shift as much as we can back to E North because uh, that's a, a really critical spot in the system. So we think our plans and specs are going to be done and ready for review by CPRA next week. Yeah, as the court does said, we, we spent a little more time on the berm here. All of our berms are open, but the core when they built the original letter, they have a, a, a bunch of shell and it was based on the letter. And we always had some concern that if there was any pool on the letter, we have seen water once or twice, but it appears that that water starts from the weight coming from underneath the lake, not from the other side. So that's not a problem. So we're just adding a, just a little more thickness to the, the berm to ensure that that water doesn't get through the levee. And, uh, and we had brought the high water for the storm fire, and we had no problems at all. So we not only were quite as far as we thought, but we had to take care of the little, a couple of areas that we might have a little concern. That's all it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Uh, Delta Cools, I don't want to hear from the Mitchell's office. Uh, all sides, uh, Stevie or Jeremy? Uh, I'll you. handle it today, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So we have a couple of projects that we report on. So first one is a project down in Golden Meadow, which we're calling the Golden Meadow Marsh Terraces Project. This is a project where we're going to try and reestablish some of the spoil banks in the area uh, and, and build them to the same elevation as we've done with some of the terrace construction in other parts of uh, other parts of South Louisiana and they're also looking at potentially filling in the open water area between those uh, spoil banks and the levee system, right? Um, so we actually met with Wendell just before our meeting today. We developed a plan that would, uh, again, as I say, uh, reestablish that, I guess it's the southwestern uh, um, Spoil bank right there as a, as a terrace. Um, we think there's sufficient quantity in the canal to certainly do that. Um, build it up to about a plus three, uh, and it would settle down to about a plus two. Uh, that would take about 20,000 yards out of the canal. Uh, that leaves about 30,000 left in the canal, uh, and we made some assumptions that if we could move all 30,000 out of the canal, we could build four to five acres of marsh in the open water areas on the inside. Uh, that, that project ends up being a relatively modest project, about $450,000, $400,000. Um, again, based on our meeting today with Wendell, we're going to uh, share that with the uh, Lafourche Parish government 
with the idea of trying to scare up some construction dollars. As of right now, the project does not have any construction dollars. Right, Well, there's not any right. dollars today. Yeah, we just agreed to do the engineering and the tax to try to get the funding to do the project. Again, well, one better point is right here. This is where this levy is the one that goes parallel to the park and then this is where it goes back right. to the park. So we're looking to get this oil bank that's in the old ruins on a fixable field. And use those oil banks to build them up, get the marsh a little bit, and we might be able to get some more units on. And if this works, I mean, get some funding, we can actually keep on doing that and try to catch a good portion of that, uh, that field. It, it'd be a great place for uh, kayaks and field roads. You know, still have the boat board for the most part with catfish lake, but a few people will have a, a boat board where you can get out there and catch some nice fish. Yeah, and you know, again, if we're successful, we'll call it the wet park. You know, the wet bridge park, and then the wet, so the wet park will be the park. So you know, somebody see? doing a little retirement park for himself. You got to do something. I don't know what you did. Just see. I've been doing more. Just see. Just see. Yeah. So you want to try that? Yeah. Or retire. <laughs> So, that, so that's it for that one, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next project we got is the, what we call the Reach K terraces. So uh, some terraces that were damaged that we had built as mitigation for Reach K. They were damaged in Hurricane Barry. And that's Grand Bayou right here, right? That's Grand Bayou. Grand Bayou, yeah. this is Portia. That's right. And so, and I, I'll be honest with you, I can't see it too well from my hand. I'm sorry. But some of the terraces that are close to Grand Bayou that kind of jump out in that image, see those little ones? Those are the ones that were damaged. So uh, instead of rebuilding them there, we've asked for permission to rebuild them over to the left-hand side of the screen, closer to Bayou Pornishank, because the soil's better over there. This has got FEMA funding in it, so we got a request to move from FEMA to move it from one location to the next. We've made that request. Um, again, just to remind everybody, this is, the, the project is literally 9 and 10 funded with FEMA, so you know, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt to ask for permission, but quite frankly, it's their money anyway. So, uh, they need to approve it. We made that request to move it over to the, to the west. It's kind of close to where the boat launch and all is, and uh, you know, the live fishery boat launch and point of chain that part of the world. Okay? But we're waiting for them to approve the request. So, will you remove the, the ones that are on the right? No. The base on the left, or you just build new? We would just build new ones on the left. The ones on the right had some damage. It's really a little hard to see in this image, but some of them were damaged when Hurricane Barry came across right there. Uh, and instead of repairing them and rebuilding them on the right, we're just going to try and spend the money on the left. We're going to leave whatever's left of the ones on the right, we're just going to leave them there. We're not going to do anything. But they still will provide protection. They are, yeah. Okay. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. That's it. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Um, Legal permit and right away permit. And that's this one, buddy. We took this one off too long. Is that wrong? Okay. Okay, finance committee, uh, Mike. Okay, Mr. President, the finance committee met and uh, reviewed all invoices and determined it should be paid and presented. Okay, uh, there's a motion by the finance committee chairman. To uh, pay all invoices. Second by Mr. Ronald. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hold. Motion carried. Uh, personnel committee. Okay, so the personnel committee met and we uh, just started the process to advertise to hire the, the general manager's position. Uh, our plan is to advertise for the position, take applications, interview, uh, select an individual for the position, and keep that position. Rolling, the wind was still here, so there's a transition period to mesh in where you could eventually just take off. And so that time period is yet to be determined. So uh, I think we'll just start advertising for it immediately. Okay. So um, also, uh, we talked about general um, moving window to assistant general manager, executive, executive secretary, Mr. Ronald Scott Davenport. And then authorize the personnel committee to approve or reject employee pay raises for the year 2023. Any board Okay, you've heard the recommendation of our chairman of the personnel committee. Move by Mr. Ronald, second by Robert Curall. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any old business? Any old business? I know one thing. Yeah, that hurricane, you know, our people were there. We lost half the community, 1,500 people, half the people died. 
and uh, they recruited a couple of visitors there. And then uh, we had Hurricane Ida, just as powerful as that storm that hit Shanghai. Yeah. And uh, we did lose a lot. It's almost like it's come full circle, you know, learning the lesson that, that that's not there. And there's more in control of the situation. And, uh, yeah, it was a storm, and that was a lot. The only thing is we still need the people to head north when there's a big storm. So, Nobody can guarantee that the system is going to hold up when it's far from school. So we're actually high ground, and hopefully it protects the home. But uh, if there is kind of trying to come full circle, that uh, we lost lives and we did. How much difference in the war at that time, Shanghai provided? The water elevation, we got we to believe that, that the water elevations were actually higher for this, for this storm. I mean, we had a run up to 16 feet. <laughs> You know, uh, in reading the much hand, it took, it took 12 to 14 feet. You know, uh, being Cheyenne, but it was flat and it's, it's right there. But we have lost so much force, it's not that much different. And we are yeah. up here some 30 miles from the north and uh, that the same type of water. But it, it, it really is something that uh, that message and seeing their sharing talk about mm. how sad it is uh, helped inspire, I think, people to, uh, to support what we did. I gave a talk to the tax authorities, the state, like, you know, each parish, the sales tax authority that collects it. And, uh, you know, I told them, if, if, if the people of this area, 82% approved that we're paying sales tax. Had they not done that, this community would not be existing, at least not this way. And so it, it, it really was never just a levy issue. It was everybody in South who said, we need to get this done and, and uh, get the benefits. But, uh, we can't guarantee, we can't guarantee the future, we can only guarantee that we be better today than yesterday, we be better than what was today, and keep on working, get out of the way when there's a big storm, and hopefully it protects you all. And I think, I think we need to reiterate that, and of course that going forward, not to have a comfort feeling when they do have a bad storm come around, when there's an annual uh, uh, evacuation mandate, we should advise people to leave, even though we survived this one, it's nice to feel comfortable, we don't have a lot of confidence in the we need them to be evacuated when they were yeah, but when the parish gives the order, mandatory evacuation, leave. Right. Don't take a chance. Correct. Right. Okay. Any uh, any new business? Any new business? Any new business? No. Okay. So then no executive session. I have a motion by Mr. Ronald. That we adjourn. Second by Monty. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Merry Christmas to one and all. Yeah, you know we can't adjourn. Everybody can celebrate. Last year, it was hard to celebrate. Yeah.